Joining me now is uh, yet another of the wonderful performers in this evening's program, Peter Gallagher. Good evening. Welcome, Peter. Great to be um, here. Tell us a little bit about the song or the songs that you're singing in the show. Well, I'm, I'm just two. It's all happened so fast, I'm a little appalled to say that I don't really know an awful lot about the songs. Um, I'm hoping desperately I'll remember the lyrics. <laughs> and, uh, and the melody would be good, too. What um, made you one, choose them? I didn't choose them. Oh. Um, I, I think Paul Gemignani and our uh, orchestrator had something to do with it, and they're lovely songs. One's Lover, which I believe is a Rodgers and Hart song. I thought at first it was a Romberg song, but I think it's a Rodgers and Hart song. Lover, when I'm near you. And then an amazing song. Well, I guess I do know a little bit about them. An amazing song that I wasn't aware of at all, because uh, I had missed the show. It's from Woman, Woman of the Year, a Cander and Ebb song called Sometimes a Day Goes By, originally sung by Harry Guardino. And it's a, and it's a great song about uh, someone who has lost someone very important in their lives and speaking about the fact that, you know, sometimes a day goes by when I don't think about her. Mm -hmm. Never more than that, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a lovely song. I'm looking forward to hearing both of them. I'll try not to screw them up for you. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a guy that has sort of played in a lot of different arenas. You've been in film, on television, on the stage. What is it that makes you want to come in and learn two new songs and, and sort of risk uh, getting up in front of a crowd and, and doing this tonight? I asked myself that same question because <laughs> I'm actually currently in the middle of shooting a movie. I got off the plane yesterday and I've got, as soon as I finish doing the show tomorrow night, I've got to shoot the next day in Toronto too. Um, and the movie is? The movie's called Feast of All Saints, based on Anne Rice's book, and uh, Peter Maddock directed it's a good movie. Because um, I love it. You know, I mean, I was just downstairs at the, or at the, with the they call the Zitz Probe, the, where we sit down and, or stand up, and listen to the orchestra for the first you time. Zitz. Uh, you, you Zitz and you probe. <laughs> That's right. And hopefully it's not going to be too painful for anybody. Um, and, uh, you know, I was just, it, it, moments like that, sort of remind me of how lucky I feel to be able to participate in these various arenas, as you call them. Um, and I was listening to Rebecca Luker, who was, I've worked with, but never sung with, never worked in a musical with, That's interesting. and who I'm a big fan of, and listening to her to sing the opening of this medley that I'm a part of, and with the orchestra playing, and it was just so powerful. And I was thinking that I'm, I'm very fortunate that I get to sort of stumble between those different worlds and I would be sad if I had to you know s spend my time exclusively in one or the other. Is there anyone this evening that you've never ever worked with before that you're particularly excited about having the opportunity of working with? Well I, I met Julie Andrews <coughs> excuse me I, I met Julie Andrews yesterday and uh, I had met her briefly before once once before, but I just, you know, it's like just to be on the, I don't do, I'm not going to do anything with her, but um, I mean, you know, we're not going to sing or anything like <laughs> Mayday, 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 Mayday! Uh, <laughs> we'll be using that. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be admiring her from off stage, um, but just to be sort of in the same event at the same time and, uh, Geez, I've, you know, worked with Nathan Lane, of course, and Marin, and Maisie, and, and uh, I think it'll be great to see Robert Goulet, and, you know, and, uh, um, but mostly I think most of us are just sort of on that, that feeling of trying to, you know, not succumb completely to abject terror. So, <laughs> so <laughs> where I, I think for most of us, and certainly me included, I, I just don't want to be the one to drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I want Miss Andrews to remember me. <laughs> right. Um, who were some of your musical heroes when you were growing up? The men that you looked up to and perhaps aspired to to be. You mean in musical theater? I didn't really have any in musical theater because I, I I I, uh, I didn't really know that much about it. Um, I did a lot when I was I me. Mean, I guess we're growing up before I started. I mean, I did a lot of musicals on Broadway and straight plays too, 
but in terms of music, I was always a huge fan of Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. And just about the whole Rat Pack. Um, <laughs> and um, and since, since then, I've, I've listened to, to uh, The Elevator that's coming up. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Like, mm. I'm going to take that opportunity to change uh -huh. the topic. When you're deciding about a role, whether it be a script for a film or a script for the theater, what is it that you're looking for? Um, it's something that thrills me, you know, depending on my depending on my financial situation, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to throw good taste to, to the wind and, <laughs> and pay the darn bills. <laughs> you know, you just have to say this, mm, doing this for the Gipper, <laughs> for both little Gippers well, we and Mrs. Too. Gipper <laughs> and but Mr. Gipper. But um, what, uh, um, I mean, what I look for is something that I, I guess it goes in order of material, if I find that there's something exciting about the material, or the director, if there's some, if, if it's a director, there's certain directors I'll work with regardless of the material because I know something that will evolve, it'll be an interesting experience, and um, you know, and then that sort of unknown thing that just makes the hair stand up in the back of your head or makes you feel something when you're reading it, or the people assembled sometimes. Lucky to be in a business that has some passion. Well, you know, it's hard, not easy to find, if you, if you really make a point of, you know, trying to find that stuff, every once in a while you do get lucky. As Woody Allen says, 90% of life is showing up. I certainly do believe that. And every once in a while, you, if you keep on showing up, you do get lucky. Has there ever been a song that you had to sing uh, that you grew to hate more and more every time you sang it, and yet it was your job? To continue singing it. Um, you know the the miraculous thing about being on stage is that I've I've done a run of a play on Broadway for I've probably done fifteen over a thousand performances on Broadway, and maybe it's just my brain, but I can, the longest run I've ever done a show is about a year and a half, and I think. Three days after I'd left that show, I could not remember a single thing about the whole thing. So I, I uh, it's, maybe it's just, I don't generally tend to remember the things I'd like to forget. And, uh, and, and I hope you folks don't do that either at home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so I, I can't really think of, generally, I, you know, I've been, the Guys and Dolls was, you know, there wasn't a bad song in it. I mean, there's some things. The fact is, when you sing with an orchestra, that that alone is kind of a just a great, extraordinary feel. I don't have to do it all the time, so I still think of it as a really wonderful thing. Good for you. I think that's a wonderful answer, actually. Um, what would you say are the biggest misconceptions that people have about Broadway and Broadway performers? I remember um, when I started out, the only thing I really aspired to do was work on Broadway. Because, I did, again, I, 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 was, and I know it sounds like I grew up a hole in the ground, but I, I didn't, hadn't seen any theater until I was pretty old. I hadn't see, didn't see a movie until I was pretty old. So I most, and, but I started doing plays when I was in school and, I, and musicals. And so I, I always aspired to you know, be in uh, the theater. And I forgot the question. What was it? What are the uh, biggest misconceptions that people have? Oh, so the first time I had an opportunity to go to Los Angeles and I was working on a movie years ago, and I sat down to be, and I was pretty proud of the Broadway that I'd done, you know, and, and I sat down with the casting director, and she said, well, you know, we find that people who do Broadway are a little broad. And I said, you mean that's why they call it Broadway? Is that what you think? No, but so uh, you know, so that, that I think that's a misconception. That I mean, you know, certainly there's not great acting everywhere you go. You know, that movies are. I think it's generally the same percentage 
Um, maybe the biggest misconception about Broadway is that there is anything remotely easy about it. I think the only people who really wax rhapsodic about working on Broadway are the people who never have. Because until you've done a musical for any period of time and have done eight shows a week for a period of time, <laughs> you really have no idea how tough it is. It hurts. And you know what? And as soon as you can be limping into that theater thinking, I can't believe I have to do this again. Just ready to lose your mind. Are you putting on the makeup or putting on the thing and doing whatever, your vocal line, doing it, ding, ding, boom, 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 and you walk out, you know, you walk and you're waiting for your entrance and you hear the music, especially if it's a good show, and you hear that orchestra, and you just, and for that period of time, while you're on stage, there's nothing like it. But get in there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. Good answer. Um, what makes a really good audience? What makes that audience special? Um, you know, I think it's kind of goes, it goes uh, hand in hand with the performance. You never know whether it's the audience or whether it's the performance. You know, if you're, in, if you're fortunate enough to be in a show that works and you, you're also fortunate enough to be part of moments that are powerful, either very funny or moving in some way, the most exciting thing for me, the most ex exciting thing for an that makes I have to they go hand in hand. I can't really blame the audience. The easiest thing, ah, oh, the audience stinks today, or the and I don't know if that's that's quite fair. But what's exciting is when it's surprising things happen, and uh, um, you got to keep the hand motions. Just you know, just make sure you're behind, right behind this card. I know you give me the hook. I'm going. I'm talking as fast as I can. <laughs> Um, is is uh, what was this a question about the audience? What makes a good audience? Yeah, what makes it special? What makes having an audience? The thing is, having an audience is special, especially in this day and age. If you have the opportunity to do movies and TV, having an audience is the only time as an actor you have any real sense of uh, being present when those exciting things happen, and it's a sense of power and it's a sense of you know very humbling experience. When those silences are so deep that you can, that are deep, and then when something surprising occurs and that explosion is truly explosive, you're, it's for that millisecond you establish a, a, there's, a, there's a sense of community and there's a sense of shared experience that you're a conduit of and, and, and part of that is as close to divine as you can really hope for as an entertainer, you know. Um, when it works, there's nothing like it. The trick is you can't expect it to work every night, you know. If you have two good shows out of eight a week, that's pretty good, you know. And the shading is, you know, infinitesimal, but there's some nights when the show is on and the audience is ready to receive it that, you know, makes all the stuff I was talking about doing eight shows a week and so on just worth every you know, worth it. Okay. Well, last question. I know that we're getting the hook going. I'm saying we're getting a signal. Okay. <laughs> um, and if you could actually, when you answer this question, if you could use uh, the term Channel 13 instead of public television, that's what Richard Kennedy is looking for. Um, you're a New Yorker. Yes. Uh, you have children. Yes. You probably watch Channel 13. I'm hoping they watch Channel 13 or have watched. What channel is that on? Uh, <laughs> Channel 13. <laughs> Let's see, 1313. Three, one three. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope that you're one of the folks uh, who believes that what we do on public television is worth supporting. And if you would just tell the folks why they should uh, join in. Well, help us do what we ima do. imagine politics without lobbyists or with campaign reform. You know, this is entertainment without an angle. You know, it's, it's, it's captured purely for the, the value of its content. Not what it might mean to someone who's advertising or not what it might mean to, but purely these things that have no other home. Mm -hmm. You know, we did it when we did Guys and Dolls, and I found this, we went all around the, you know, all places around the world. 
We did a show about the making of the album called uh, Off the Record. On public television. On public television. Channel 13. Channel 13. <laughs> On Channel 13 public television, we right. made this Off the Record thing. And it was amazing how many people it affected. You know, I said, gosh, I've always wondered how those albums are made or what. You really did that and did this. And I'd been always interested in Broadway, but I, I didn't really know that much about it. And I, you know, I'm, but I was great seeing behind the scenes. And there's a show that never would have been on network. You know, how are you going to convince a, you know, multinational conglomerate and their shareholders that this is going to be appeal to this certain demographic for this, 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 this? Mm -hmm. It's the one little island in all the spectrum of, you know, of, of television, broadcast, and cable that's, that seems to really serve, particularly the performing arts. It's the only place you really can see ballet or music or... Um, and great kids programs, you know. So, I love PBS. I love Channel 13. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Peter. Great to have you here. Good to be here.